Ecclesiastes 1, 12-18 I, the preacher, was king over Israel in Jerusalem, and I set my heart to seek and search out by wisdom concerning all that is done under heaven. This burdensome task God has given to the sons of man, by which they may be exercised. I have seen the works that are done under the sun, and indeed all is vanity and grasping for the wind. What is crooked cannot be made straight, and what is lacking cannot be numbered. I communed with my heart, saying, Look, I have attained greatness, and have gained more wisdom than all who were before me in Jerusalem. My heart has understood great wisdom and knowledge, and I have set my heart to know wisdom and to know madness and folly. I perceive that this also is a grasping for the wind, for in much wisdom is much grief, and he who increases knowledge increases sorrow. At the end of his life, Solomon reflected on the lessons he had learned from his life's experiences. As a man who had once walked humbly with the Lord, but had wandered away from the one who had blessed him with great wisdom and wealth. And what he concluded is that all of life is vanity, a chasing after the wind. All that remains after a lifetime of earthly labor and toil is emptiness. From his viewpoint under the sun, Solomon had become blinded because of his great wealth, his many wives, and his life's work. His vision became clouded by the world, and he wandered far from the Lord. Like the story of the prodigal son, Solomon found that his possessions, position, and power afforded him no lasting satisfaction. It only led him to disappointment and heartache. In the end, he came to the conclusion that a life without God is vanity and grasping for the wind. He had in his possession all that the world had to offer, and still his life was empty, meaningless. All that was left for all his searching, experimenting, building, and accumulating were empty hands and an empty heart. Solomon was the wisest man that ever lived. He dedicated his life to searching and seeking the answers to the meaning of life. He experimented with everything, science, nature, philosophy, pleasure, religion, morality. He had all the wisdom and resources he needed to pursue his quest to find satisfaction. And what did he discover? That nothing has changed. One generation passes away and another generation comes, but the earth abides forever. And nothing is new. That which has been is what will be, and that which is done is what will be done, and there is nothing new under the sun. And that life is difficult to understand. What is crooked cannot be made straight, and what is lacking cannot be numbered. All this is true, of course, without God. But with God, all things become new. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. The blind see and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached to them. The crooked thing becomes straight. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight, and the rough places smooth. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The monotonous natural world becomes alive with miracles. The seas open, the rain stops, the raging wind and waves become calm, the sun stands still. He calms the storm so that the waves are still, then they are glad because they are quiet, so he guides them to their desired haven. He turns the wilderness into pools of water and dry land into water springs. Whoever is wise will observe these things and they will understand the loving kindness of the Lord. All that man is seeking and searching and laboring for is found in Christ. 
who has come to give us life eternal and to the full. In Christ alone our labor is not in vain, and our soul's yearning will be abundantly satisfied. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men, for he satisfies the longing soul and he fills the hungry soul with goodness.